All right. So a couple of weeks ago, I talked about um, a three-step framework that I've used to help when you're in a change program or you're setting up a change program or you're trying to embed change in your organization. And that three-step framework was about how do I take someone from where they are today to where I need them to be, whether it's dropping old belief patterns, dropping old ways of working, um, taking on a new mindset, taking on new ways of working. How do I get them from A to B? And the big meaty part in the middle of that framework was about what type of experiences or uh, environments or tools are we using to help that person to move from A to B, to understand that the way that they're working today might not be the best way to get the result that they want and that actually this new way of working is really great or um, to take on a new mindset shift, or to take on a new tool that's going to get them um, the results that they're looking for. So when we're thinking about constructing those experiences, uh, I wanted to share with you another piece of the puzzle in uh, the way that you start to design those learning opportunities. So I was taught this model by a very dear friend of mine. Um, Ebby, you taught me everything you know. You really did. <laughs> Um, and the, the, the framework goes something like this. Three ways to change thinking. The first is rational. So I could sit and have a conversation with you and tell you about my new idea. Um, and depending on how that resonated with you, you might choose to take that on board and run with it. Or maybe it conflicts with something that you've already got going on and you choose to, to push it away. The rational way to change thinking is probably where I notice that we spend most of our time as professionals or as consultants um, or as leaders actually as well. And, and rational ways to change thinking include things like a conversation um, or putting together a white paper or a report. It's that discourse back and forth where I attempt to convince you through the power of logic that this thing that I'm doing is really, really great and you should jump on board. So that's one way that we can change thinking. Now, if that doesn't work, I could choose a second option, which is coercion. So if I put that report on your desk and um, or if we have that conversation and you're not coming around to my point of view, I can go and tell your boss to just do it the way that I said. Uh, now, the, the your ability to have that change in thinking A, happen, but B, stick when you use coercion is pretty minimal. In the same way as having a rational conversation is not going to work for everybody. It's not a surefire 100%, you know, or even a 98% a of the time we're going to convince somebody of our way of um, thinking. Um, probably less so with coercive. People really push back against that. Uh, so what option do we have instead? Well, the third way to change thinking is what was described to me as a normative approach or an experiential-based approach to learning. And so in this uh, particular format, what we're doing is we're constructing a learning experience. We're constructing a situation in which someone is allowed to see the uh, pattern, the belief, the way of working that they are holding on to today in a situation where that doesn't work, it doesn't get the result that they need, and then to be presented with an alternative that gets them to the result that they leave, that they need. And so, uh, Ebby used to talk about this this unlearn learn loop. So it's it's a bit of a double whammy. It's this idea that you've got to put people into a situation where they can see and learn for themselves that what they're doing today is not working and it's not going to get them the result that they want, whilst at the same time offering up an alternative way of working or an alternative mindset or alternative tool set that is going to get them the result and have them learn that that can get them to where they need to be. As you can imagine, if you're going to go out and institute this in your organization, it takes quite a lot of thought. Now, it might be as simple as five or ten minutes prep before your meeting in terms of, um, you know, understanding the purpose of this particular conversation and how you're going to craft that so that it's more 
um, focused on the change that you're looking for, even though it's a rational change. But if you're going to go whole hog and design those learning experiences, that takes some time and energy. And it's not something that we're necessarily taught to do. It's not something that we practice often. Uh, and, and that's what it really needs to come down to, is that if you're going to really make the change stick, you need to start to get into that space of what is the experience that I can offer this person that will help them to see that what they're doing is not working today and that there might be an alternative way to get what it is that they're after. So I'll leave you with that this week. Go and uh, have some fun. Take that stakeholder plan with the with the group of people and, and where they are today, their drivers and motivators, where you want them to be, and start to think about not only the conversations that you need to have, but the experiences that they need to have. The more sensory input you can draw into this, the better. So go away and make sure that you're, um, you're fleshing out those experiences and they are more than just a conversation because that's what's going to make it really stick for you. I hope wherever you are in the world today, you're having a wonderful day uh, and we'll see you next week.